Good morning, first grade friends. My name is Miss Gregory, and I am here to teach you a little bit about social studies. I teach at Gibbs Elementary School, and I have a lot of first grade students who I love and I miss. Good morning, friends. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started today with our social studies lesson. All right, so today, boys and girls in social studies, we are going to um, learn a little bit about spending and saving money. So if you, this video is hard to understand, I want you to turn off the closed or turn on the closed captions if that's available for you. I want you to adjust the playback speed to slow down the video just a little bit. Consider watching short clips and then pausing and listening and watching again. Ask someone at your home to watch the video with you. Stop frequently and talk about what, um, what you heard and what you, might have, what you might have understood. So today our lesson objective, we will discuss and determine reasons people spend money and reasons people save money. So today on our agenda, we're going to review a little bit what we've learned um, in our um, Knox County at home. Um, we're going to review those terms. We're going to introduce our new topic today. We're going to read about it, talk about it, and write about it. So let's review a little bit of vocabulary. So the first week that Miss Gregory taught you, you may remember that we um, did some goods and services. And we talked about how the goods are things that are made or grown and, um, and or things that you can buy. The services are things that people do for others. Now, after that, we talked a little bit about being a producer and a consumer. And we talked about how producers are the people who make or grow the goods or offer the services, and a consumer is someone who buys the goods or the services. Then the next week, I taught a lesson about needs and wants. And we talked about how a need is something that you have to have. Okay, it's a must. Your wants are something that you would like to have. So now that we've reviewed our vocabulary from previous weeks, let's hop in and talk about the vocabulary for today. So today we're going to talk about spending money and saving money. So to spend means to use money to pay for something. And to save, it means to put aside for later use or to keep the money. So let's jump in and talk about spending money. So there's choices everywhere, okay? So people spend money on lots of different things. They buy food to eat and clothing to wear. They buy movies to watch and video games to play. How people choose to spend money depends on their wants and their needs. So there's some vocabulary words that we have talked about in the past. Needs and wants. We've talked about those. We know what those are. So a lot of times our, the way that we spend our money is decided um, on what we need and what we want. So sometimes there's difficult choices. Deciding how to spend money can be really hard. People should always spend their money on things that they need first. There's another word, another important vocabulary word, need. Once their needs are met, people may decide to buy some of the items that they want. So remember, our needs are something that we must have, and remember we identified those the last time as food and water and shelter. Um, and then our wants are things that we would like to have, but we don't have to have them to survive. So now let's talk a little bit about saving money. Sometimes people choose to save their money instead of spending it. Saving money helps people buy things. They will need um, or want maybe later. Saving money is a good choice. Savings can add up. 
small amounts of money add up over time. If you put $2 in a jar each week, you will have $8 at the end of the month. After saving for a year, you will have more than $100. So saving that money adds up, and it's also such a smart and good choice. All right, so now that we've talked a little bit about spend or save, we're gonna play a little game together. You may recognize some of these pictures from your packet that was printed out um, or picked up. Um, or if you don't have a packet and you're just watching with us, then you're gonna get to see these for the first time. So spend or save. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we're gonna decide if we're gonna spend it or if we're gonna save it or save for it, okay? So if we're gonna spend money for it because it's a need, remember it's a need, we can spend our money. But if it's a want, it's something that we just really would like to have, we probably should save for it. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, once, if it's a spend, we're going to give it a big old circle, okay? If it's a save, we're gonna give it a check mark. Okay, so here we go, let's do it. So fruit, should we spend or should we save on fruit or food? Spend or save, okay? It's a, it's a, or it's a need, okay? We need our food, okay, it's a need. So we're going to spend, so check mark, we're gonna spend, okay? Now, doctor visit, hmm, is doctor visit a need or a want? Let's determine that. And then are we gonna spend money on it or are we gonna save money for it? Hmm, good, doctor visits are a need. So we're going to spend a guitar. I really like to play music, but do I need the guitar right now? Or is it something that I can save for later? It's definitely something I can save. So we're gonna circle that one, okay? Circle for save. All right, so let's see, jewelry. Oh, I love some jewelry. However, it's not a need. So I'm gonna save my money and I'm going to wait it out and see what I can get, okay? Now, what about an umbrella? Do we have to have an umbrella? We definitely don't have to have it, but guess what? I like to have it and it's okay to spend just a little bit on something that you need and it's not super expensive. So I'm gonna say we do need an umbrella. What about costumes? Do we need costumes? Hmm. I'm gonna say that's something that we can save on. Now, I've done a lot of these. Now I want you to look at the rest of them and I want you to pick out two things that you would spend your money on, remember a need that you really need, and then I want you to think about two things that you would save up for, okay? Do that real quick. Two things that you would spend your money on, and then two things that you might save your money for. Wonderful job. I hope you found some wonderful things that you would spend your money on or save your money for. Now, now that we've talked a little bit about why people spend their money or why people save their money, let's talk a little bit about where we can save our money. So there's two different places that you can save your money. You can save your money at home Okay, you can save your money at home. Saving your money at home is easy. You can put it your money in a jar or a piggy bank, um, and you might wanna add money as you can and watch that jar fill up, okay? Or 
there's a thing at the bank called a savings account and you can save money at the bank. So you can save that money, the bank pays interest on it and your interest builds up a little bit um, over time and that's where the bank pays you or gives you money for keeping your money in the bank. So when you take that money out, the bank gives it back with interest. So you kind of earn some money when you are keeping your money in savings at the bank. Now, we are going to read just a little bit about um, a um, little girl and a family who saves their money at home. And I want you to listen as our friend reads to us a chair for my mother. It is a wonderful book, and I'm super excited for you to get to hear this book. So let's pull up a chair for my mother. A Chair for My Mother, author and illustrator Vera B. Williams, published by Scholastic Incorporated. My mother works as a waitress in the Blue Tile Diner. After school, sometimes I go to meet her there. Then her boss, Josephine, gives me a job, too. I wash the salts and peppers and fill the ketchups. One time, I peeled all the onions for the onion soup. When I finish, Josephine says, good work, honey and paste me. And every time I put half of my money into the jar. It takes a long time to fill a jar this big. Every day when my mama comes home from work, I take down the jar. My mama empties all her change from tips out of her purse for me to count. Then we push all of the coins into the jar. Sometimes my mama is laughing when she comes home from work. Sometimes she's so tired she falls asleep while I count the money out into piles. Some days she has lots of tips. Some days she has only a little. Then she looks worried. But each evening, every single shiny coin goes into the jar. We sit in the kitchen to count the tips. Usually Grandma sits with us too. While we count, she likes to hum. Often. She has money in her old leather wallet for us. Whenever she gets a good bargain on tomatoes or bananas or something she buys, she puts by the savings and they go into the jar. When we can't get a single other coin into the jar, we are going to take out all the money and go and buy a chair. Yes, a chair. A wonderful, beautiful, fat, soft armchair. We will get one covered in velvet with roses all over it. We are going to get the best chair in the whole world. That is because our old chairs burned up. There was a big fire in our other house. All our chairs burned. So did our sofa and so did everything else. That wasn't such a long time ago. My mother and I were coming home from buying new shoes. I had new sandals. She had new pumps. We were walking to our house from the bus. We were looking at everyone's tulips. She was saying, she liked red tulips. And I was saying, I like yellow ones. Then we came to our block. Right outside our house stood two big fire engines. I could see lots of smoke. Tall orange flames came out of the roof. All the neighbors stood in a bunch across the street. Mama grabbed my hand and we ran. My Uncle Sandy saw us and ran to us. Mama yelled, where's mother? I yelled, where's my grandma? My aunt Ida waved and shouted, she's here, she's here. She's okay, don't worry. Grandma was all right. Our cat was safe too, though it took a while to find her. But everything else in our whole house was spoiled. What was left of the house was turned to charcoal and ashes. We went to stay with my mother's sister, Aunt Ida and Uncle Sandy. Then we were able to move into the apartment downstairs. We painted the walls yellow. The floors were all shiny, but the rooms were very empty. 
The first day we moved in, the neighbors brought pizza and cake and ice cream. They brought lots of other things, too. Family across the street brought a table and three kitchen chairs. The very old man next door gave us a bed from when his children were little. My other grandpa brought us his beautiful rug. My mother's other sister, Sally, made us red and white curtains. Mama's boss, Josephine, brought pots and pans, silverware and dishes. My cousin brought me her own stuffed bear. Everyone clapped when my grandma made a speech. You are all the kindest people, she said. And we thank you very, very much. It's lucky we're young and can start all over. That was last year. But we still have no sofa and no big chairs. When Mama comes home, her feet hurt. There's no good place for me to take a load off my feet, she says. When Grandma wants to sit back and hum and cut up potatoes, she has to get as comfortable as she can on a hard kitchen chair. That is how come Mama brought home the biggest jaw she could find at the diner and all the coins started to go into the jaw. Now the jaw is too heavy for me to lift down. Uncle Sandy gave me a quarter. He had to boost me up so I could put it in. After supper, Mama and Grandma and I stood in front of the jaw. Well, I never would have believed it, but I guess it's full, Mama said. My mother brought home little paper wrappers for the nickels and the dimes and the quarters. I counted them all out and wrapped them all up. On my mother's day off, we took all the coins to the bank. The bank exchanged them for $10 bills. Then we took the bus downtown to shop for our chair. We shopped through four furniture stores. We tried out big chairs and smaller ones, high chairs and low chairs, soft chairs and harder ones. Grandma said she felt like Goldilocks and the Three Bears trying out all the chairs. Finally, we found the chair we were all dreaming of. And the money in the jar was enough to pay for it. We called Aunt Ida and Uncle Sandy. They came right down in their pickup truck to drive the chair home for us. They knew we couldn't wait for it to be delivered. I tried out the chair in the back of the truck. Mama wouldn't let me sit there while we drove, but they let me sit in it while they carried it up to the door. We set the chair right beside the window with the red and white curtain. Grandma and Mama and I all sat in it while Aunt Ida took our picture. Now, Grandma sits in it and talks with people going by in the daytime. Mama sits down and watches the news on TV when she comes home from her job. After supper, I sit with her and she can reach right up and turn out the light if I fall asleep in her lap. Mm -hmm. The end. All right. That was wonderful. It was a great story about a family who had saved for something they really, really wanted. Not something they needed because they had chairs, but it was just something they really wanted. And it was a great story and a great way to show why it's important to spend your money or save your money. All right, so let's hop back to our, our lesson. So we read about a, a chair for mama or for mother, and um, we read about a little girl and her mom and her grandmother and how they were saving money in a jar at home to buy something they really wanted. So how did they save their money? We talked about different ways. So how did they save their money? They saved their money in a jar at home. What are some other ways that you could save your money? Yeah, that's right. Remember we talked about a bank and we talked about, um, we talked about a piggy bank at home or we talked about putting in a savings account at a bank. So where did they save? They saved at home. Why did they save? 
they really, really wanted that chair, that one chair that they could all share, be comfortable in, that beautiful chair. They really, really wanted it. So I want you to think about something that you might save for. It could be a toy, it could be a vacation, it could be something that you are deciding to save your money for. So think on that. Hmm. Now it's time for us to write about it. So we've read about it, we've talked about it, and now it's time for us to write about it. So in your packet, you also have this page and it talks a little bit about our story. It says, in the story, A Chair for My Mother by Vera Williams, a family makes a decision to save coins in a jar to purchase a new chair. Draw a picture of something that you would like to buy and answer the questions about them. So here in this, um, here in this box right here, Okay, you are going to draw a picture of something that you would like to buy or something that you would like to purchase, okay, with your money. Now remember, you may have to save, so it'll be, it can be something a little bigger, but something that you want to buy. Now, it says here, correct, circle the correct answer. When you buy something, you are a teacher, producer or consumer. Now remember, I want you to think back to all the terms that we reviewed and all the vocabulary words that we reviewed and think about which one did we talk about um, was meant when you buy something. What are you when you buy something? And then answer the questions with complete sentences. Now remember, a complete sentence has a capital letter punctuation mark, and then in my class, we call it a doer and a doing, which means you have to have a doer and a doing in your sentence, okay? So you have to have a noun, and then you have to have the verb of what it's doing. So we have to have our subject and our predicate, okay? So doer and doing. So is your item a need or a want? Now, is this something that you really need or is this something that you just really want? Where can you buy your item? So I want you to think about where you might have seen it before. And how will you get the money to buy your item? So now this is when you're gonna talk a little bit about maybe goods or some services that you can do to get that money to buy whatever you're wanting. So it all ties in together. All of this um, ties in together, talking about goods and services, needs and wants, and then talking a little bit about what we're gonna do to spend and save our money. Now, that's all I have for today. So I want you to go ahead and start working on um, your choices about money page. Talk or think real hard about what you're gonna want to buy and then all of the other answers underneath. Remember to use your, ca um, your capital letter, your punctuation mark, remember your doer and your doing, and use some bright, beautiful colors on your picture so that um, you will be, have lots of details on what you want to buy, okay? Wonderful job today. I hope you enjoyed social studies. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon.